There's a million dollars up for grabs. And if you want any shot at winning it, you need to know the best plays. Here are 13 players you must have for week one. Starting with Chargers wide receiver Mike Williams, who's in that nice salary range in DFS. He's affordable, and he has a strong week one matchup. In general, this matchup against the Raiders secondary is good, but he's specifically, for most of the game, we'll see cornerback Anthony Everett. And Anthony Everett, out of 115 graded cornerbacks by PFF last year, ranked outside the top 90. He was a bottom 15% cornerback, which is great news for Mike Williams. Williams. But that's not all. Because Mike Williams weighs 220 pounds, as you can see right here. And Anthony Everett is just a small, very small cornerback for the NFL, 178 pounds. So over 40 pound advantage Mike Williams has on Everett. That means there's going to be a lot of leverage, especially in the red zone. And this is great news because Mike Williams was used all the time in the end zone and red zone last year by the Chargers. He was top five in end zone targets last year. Touchdown upside in play for sure. Week one, look at the anytime touchdown prop as well. So you want to grab Williams and then secure this elite running back. And that man's name is Christian McCaffrey. He was only $8,500 in DFS this week. He should honestly be $10,000 plus. Because McCaffrey, since 2019, which is 26 starts during that time, and some of these games, keep in mind he left early, he is averaging 26.5 fantasy points per game and nearly 8 targets per game. And both of those metrics would have easily led all running backs last year. This man is different. Now, here's the thing. It is incredibly easy to make week one lineups because the salaries have been out for a month now. They're outdated. There is so much value. So Christian McCaffrey will be higher owned. Think 20 plus percent owned, which means you'll have to get low owned players like this wide receiver. And that's Jahan Dotson, who's a starter first round pick, by the way, for the Washington Commanders. Yet he's just $3,400 on DraftKings this week. There's your outdated pricing from a month ago, yes, Jahan Dotson is a major value, and here's what you need to know. He's starting his NFL career off week one with the best matchup you can have against last year's dead last ranked secondary in the Jacksonville Jaguars. And now this is very enticing because Dotson, when he was in college at Penn State, was elite at earning targets and getting open. His 146 targets last year was top five in all of college football. His 90 plus receptions was easily top 10. And he's reportedly Carson Wentz's favorite target in camp. So take the value here and then get this quarterback. And that would be Lamar Jackson, who's a little bit pricier but we have so much value this week it's easy to get to him and his great matchup versus the Jets so this week the Ravens are seven point favorites with a 26 point team total and Lamar has played 10 other career games with similar conditions and in those games he averages 72 rushing yards per game which is 10 more than his career average and 27.3 fantasy points per game which is six more than his career average and Lamar has great mobile upside but he also has affordable and quality stacking options like Rashad Bateman who is coming into this year as the main number one wide receiver and potentially going to see eight plus targets a game and then of course there's his number one option in Mark Andrews who is dominant in the middle of the field had by far the most slot targets out of anybody in the NFL last year and was great after the catch he would be my number one option if you're stacking Lamar Jackson but he's okay to run with no stack so Lamar is close to a must play at this price tag and so is this next running back and that would be Saquon Barkley who has a solid week one matchup he gets the Titans who have lost some pieces of their defensive line and for week one they've got some banged up injuries I mean you have Bud Dupree who was bottom 15% versus the run last year. You then have right in the middle of this line, Jones, who was bottom 15% versus the run. So you can go to the left, you can go straight up the middle, or you can go to the right against Weaver, who was bottom five versus the run last year. This is a decent to great matchup for Saquon. And check this out. The Giants are six point underdogs in this one. And Saquon averages 5.97, so six targets per game and 17.2 fantasy points per game as an underdog in his career. It's because he sees targets and he's a strong pass catcher. And if if he just gets that average at $6,100, it's a great play. So get him and then take this surprisingly low owned tight end. And yes, believe it or not, George Kittle is going to come in less than 10% owned and maybe even less than 5% owned because he's right next to guys like Travis Kelsey and Mark Andrews when people can afford them this week. And then there's Kyle Pitts, who's an exciting player that a lot of people want to play at a cheaper price tag. So you're going to get him low owned despite a great matchup. And you can see that matchup for yourself. Kittle has a top five matchup this week against the Bears linebackers. The only better matchups are Mark Andrews, Dallas Goddard, Dalton Schultz and Travis Kelsey. Last year, these same Bears linebackers ranked 26th in tackling. That's a big no-no against George Kittle. Here's why. Kittle was second in the NFL amongst tight ends in yards after the catch and number one at breaking tackles, and that was against the average defense. Now he's getting a well below average tackling unit. So Kittle's a high upside play in GPPs, and so is this next running back. I give you Clyde Edwards Hilaire, who's the clear RB1 in Kansas City. And this Chiefs game has a 53 and a half or 54 point game total, depending on where you're looking, and here's why that's important. Clyde Edwards Hilaire averages 
averages 13.2 fantasy points, which is more than his career average in games with a 50 plus point total. And it's a decent sample of 17 games. So at just $5,400 this week, he's a great value if he gets anywhere near 13, 13 and a half points with the upside of 20 plus if he finds the end zone. And there's a very good chance that the cheaper running backs this week aren't taken because it's easy to get up to the McCaffrey's and Jonathan Taylor's and those guys of the world. So you're going to get low ownership on Clyde Edwards Lair attached to Patrick Mahomes. So start him and then consider this quarterback. And that would be the Eagles quarterback, Jalen Hurts, who's one of the best plays on the entire week. And that's because he has the fantasy cheat codes. And as you can see from my tweet here, the quarterback fantasy cheat codes are mobility, rushing upside, check, he's got that, and red zone usage, check, he's got that. And because he has these cheat codes, it means he's matchup proof, but that's not all. Because this game has a 49-point game total, pretty decent. And Hurts has played eight games with a 49-point total or higher in his career. And he averages 24 fantasy points per game, that is elite, and 50 rushing yards per game, which is 15 more than his career average. This is a great spot for Hertz. In my opinion, he's an absolute steal at $6,800. And then you start to factor in the nice matchup against a shaky Detroit secondary. It's been improved from free agency and guys getting healthy, but still not the greatest. And like Lamar Jackson, I don't think you have to stack Hertz if you don't want to because of the rushing upside, but I would prioritize AJ Brown if you were to stack. And if you wanted to run it back with Detroit, you have guys like DeAndre Swift out there who stands out as a pretty clear stacking option. So Hertz is a steal at $6,800. And so is this next wide receiver. Because Michael Pittman is far too cheap at $5,500. I mean, this is absolutely insane. Especially when you take into account that he has a great week one matchup versus Houston. Here's why. Pittman is going to see the rookie who's making his first NFL start, right? That's how that works in Derek Stingley Jr. Which automatically means that Pittman will have the experience advantage here, but he also has a leverage advantage. He's 220 pounds where Stingley, 190 pounds, 30 pound leverage advantage. That's worth noting. But that's not all. Because Pittman's best matchup is going to be in the slot when he's there for 10 to 15 plus snaps a game against Desmond King. And last year, Desmond King was a bottom 10 cornerback in the entire NFL. He was 107th out of 115 graded quarterbacks from Pro Football Focus. Translation, he couldn't cover. And that's an issue because Michael Pittman was third amongst all receivers last year at getting open versus man coverage. And now he goes up against a guy for 10 to 15 snaps in this game who couldn't cover last year. Big upside. So Pittman's clearly a great play at this price point, And so is this sneaky running back. And that would be Antonio Gibson, who's a very polarizing player as it comes to your season long, your drafts, right? I'm somebody who's not that high on him there, but if we're talking DFS week to week for week one right now, yeah, he's a solid play at this price point. But that bias of not being the best season long pick that you've probably heard this summer is going to stay in some people's minds for DFS when it shouldn't. Antonio Gibson led the entire NFL in fumbles last year. That's a bad thing. The Washington Commanders added Brian Robinson, who will eventually, it seems like, return as soon as maybe week five this year. That's a bad thing for your season long shares on your rosters, your drafts of Antonio Gibson, but it doesn't matter for DFS this week. Now, check this out. Gibson has a top five run blocking advantage this week against the Jacksonville Jaguars, according to Pro Football Focus, a positive 23% advantage relative to league average. And the Jaguars last year, who haven't turned over the defensive line in any insane way, obviously they've added some pieces. NFL draft is the big piece, but it's, it's a raw unit. It's an inexperienced unit. They gave up the fourth most rushing touchdowns last year, and they were one away from being in the top two. So you can expect around 15 plus touches for Antonio Gibson, who's less than $6,000 this week. And the main reason you would want to play him is in GPPs, not cash games, but GPPs, he's going to be lower owned. He's going to be somewhere around five to 6% owned. Now this next guy might be the best tight end play on the slate, but before we get there, Tom Brady averages 260 passing yards per game in his career, but prize picks has his prop right now at 0.5 passing yards. This is not a mistake. They have a promotion going for week one of the NFL season, and you could win up to $250 by taking this free prop. If you would like to the over under on 0.5 passing yards on Tom Brady, there's a link in the description below but not only will you get this prop you will also get a $20 Amazon gift card and my weekly cheat sheet which includes rankings projections and player notes for every matchup every week of the NFL season all you got to do is follow the link in the description to get the cheat sheet which comes with that Amazon gift card and that Tom Brady free bet prop take advantage now so if you want to take advantage of this offer with the thousands of other people who already have click the link in the description to learn more so we discussed why Antonio Gibson is a great GPP play but let's talk about that crazy good tight end and that would be Mr. Trey Travis Kelsey, who is somehow cheaper than Keenan Allen this week at just $6,600 on DraftKings. Now, here's what you need to know. Since 2019, Travis Kelsey has played four games without Tyree Kill, and in those games, he averages 16 and a half fantasy points. That's good. And 8.8 targets per game. Yeah, that's good. And this game has a 54 point total. And in games with a 50 plus point total, Travis Kelsey averages 19.2 fantasy points per game. That's fantastic. And 9.4 targets per game since 2019. So prioritize him and then play this wide receiver. And that would be DJ Moore, who's being overlooked at 
$6,000 for a few reasons. The first one is the flat price syndrome that I discussed in my DFS course, and that's $6,000 flat. It's like anything else in human psychology when using money and buying. It doesn't feel like a discount. It's not $399. It's not $395. It's $6,000 flat, so people naturally go a little bit lower and feel like they're getting a discount, or they'll go up a little bit and think they're getting a better player. So you look at that, and then there's T. Higgins at $6,100, who will definitely be higher on the DJ Moore. Also, for stacking reasons, people stacking the Bengals instead of the Panthers, that'll be a reason. And then you go down a little bit, there's Michael Thomas, who will likely be higher owned. And the big one we talked about earlier, Michael Pittman at 5,500 is going to be the reason, a big reason why you're not going to see a lot of ownership on DJ Moore. So what's your takeaway? Well, DJ Moore is clearly an elite receiver. He was top 10 in yards last year, despite being paired up with Sam Darnold, who was ranked 32nd in quarterback accuracy. That somehow happened. But now you can expect an upgrade with Baker Mayfield there. So play some DJ Moore, especially at lower ownership, and then get this value wide receiver. And that would be Katarius Tony, who is somehow just $4,100 this week. Now, here's what you need to know about Tony. In five starts last year when Sterling Shepard was out and injured, Tony averaged 13.8 fantasy points per game, which is fantastic numbers and 8.8 targets per game. Now, these numbers would easily pay off a $4,100 price tag, but there's obviously upside to 20 plus points on top of that. So consider Tony a solid play for week one. And now earlier we talked about some quarterbacks, but you can see my projections and my value rankings right here. Sorted by value, Jalen Hurts is my number one value as of right now on the slate. And then Lamar Jackson also in the top five. So you can see where I'm getting sort of all of this coming into one projection that you can see on a screen. And if you want access to the projections, the ownership, the rankings, the lineup optimizer, game notes, and a whole lot more, then you can join the hundreds of other people on Patreon with the link in the description below. Best of luck in week one. And if you're not already, hit subscribe.